What's going on? We are live once again. How's everybody doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Uh, today was the official last day of school for the students here in New York City. I'm excited. Uh, got the summer ahead of me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a little tired. Today was a long day. But I have to do this live stream because this is a topic worth talking about. So if you're coming into the live stream or you're watching the replay, do me a favor. Hit the like button for us. It tells YouTube this is a video worth sharing. It helps us out daily here on Harrison Family Values. And it doesn't cost you anything. So consider it like admission for content. Just hit the like button and it'll help us out greatly. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And by doing so, you'll be joining the Harrison Extended Family. And if you want to go the extra step and be part of the Harrison, like, inner family, the, uh, you know, what's the word? Extended family and the, the immediate family, the Harrison immediate family, uh, consider joining our membership and our Patreon. But I'm not here to, like, you know, promote the, you know, yeah, just if you guys want to join, by all means. But please hit the subscribe button. All right. So listen. Um. Gatekeepers, <laughs> gatekeepers. I've been called a gatekeeper for manhood, not in the good way either. It's been by men who don't want to be told anything about themselves. Now, if you watch this channel for any length of time, you understand that I have a balanced perspective on relationships and the male female dynamic. I go as hard at men as I do with women. That's why both men and women are always upset with me about something that I said. But it really is coming from a genuine place, right? So they say, well, you'd be playing down the middle all the time. And if that's where I play, I'm playing there because I would rather be balanced because the truth of the matter is for there to be solid relationships in society today, there must be balance. We're in a world today where it's extremely polarizing. The women want all the benefits without working for anything. They want all the benefits and don't want to be told anything. They want to be called queens and, and they deserve this and that. And they expect those things. However, don't have a man expect anything from them because then it's misogynistic. But then here we have the men, right? Who believes that women should just be falling on their knees for them just because they have a third extremity growing in between their legs. Just because they are a man. They have done nothing to earn the respect or love from a woman. They think it, it should be automatic. Like they, they, they use things like it's just a male dynamic. We're a man and, and we deserve respect. No, you really don't deserve respect. You earn respect. Just like ladies, you earn a man's love. But men, you earn respect. And when I come at men and tell men you need to be a man so that you can get the respect you desire from a woman... I'm a sim. I don't know what I'm talking about. They default to red pillars who will coddle to them and tell them exactly what they want to hear. But on this channel, you're not going to get that coddle. You're going to get understanding and you're going to get pushback on ideologies. That is nonsense. A shout out to Vern that's in the chat. What's going on, my sis? And thank you so much for everybody that's watching right now, whether you're watching the live stream or the replay. Now, in every relationship, there's a qualifying time period. It's not a bad thing, though. It's not a bad thing at all. Both men and women should be dating to collect data to qualify a man or a woman for either being a husband or being a wife. Now, this is this this live stream, this this episode today. It's specifically for those men who are marriage minded, who are really identifying what a good woman is or a good wife is. And men do certain things or marriage minded men do certain things to qualify a woman to see if they're going to be a good wife. That's what everybody, every man should be doing while dating. Now, this could be offensive to some women. And if it is too bad, you're going to have to drink this coffee and you know, drink it all. Men need to be qualifying women for marriage, just like women need to be qualifying men for marriage. The problem we have today is neither is doing any of that. The only thing they're concerned about is what it looks like aesthetically 
so that when they get married, they wind up getting a divorce. 50% of marriages end in divorce. And in America, it's a, it's a heart-wrenching statistic, but a lot of it has to do with the aesthetics of everything, which is why the majority of the resources in the beginning of a marriage goes into a wedding instead of buying a home or paying off debt or doing something like that. So it's a lot about aesthetics. And that's an issue because you can't really qualify, and this is for my men, a wife based on what she looks like. Mm. Mm. Unless you want a trophy wife. But I'm not here talking about talking to the men who just want to have an eye candy on their arm. I'm talking about, I'm talking to men who really want to have a solid foundation in their marriage. And I want to shout out my sister, Bella Rings. I'm not sure if she's going to watch this, but I'm going to share this with her. Uh, she did a quick video, a short video that I wanted to play for you guys right now. A uh, great content creator. Uh, been on her show. She's been on my show. Uh, she has a, a real heart for sharing tools and tips to young women who really want to be married and who want to be wives and want to be moms. So there's a space for that. And I think women like Bella Rings who have a mindset of wanting to be a good wife and a good mother to their kids is a good thing. And it seems to be fading in this modern era of men and women. Uh, men still want that. They just don't want to do what it takes to make sure that she's good in the home. And women necessarily don't really want that because they would rather be boss babes and get their money and level up. All right. Um, and that's an issue. That's an issue uh, because neither are looking for a good husband or a good wife or unless it's only good for them, which is not good either way. But let's watch this video and this is, let's watch this video real quick. I have to pause it here. So let's watch this video real quick. You want to be a wife, but you do not qualify. He's looking, he's open to finding this wife. But again, there's an implication in that scripture saying that she was already a wife. So ladies, how can you expect for a man to wife you up if you are not prepared to be a wife? If you are not a wife. You want to be a wife, but you do not qualify. He's looking, he's open. And she, she she's given something here. She's given something here, which I appreciate. I appreciate. And the scripture she's making reference to is Proverbs 18, 22. And it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Now, here's the thing. Women will weaponize this to tell men that they are the prize. By no means is this, by no means is this scripture informing you that you are the prize. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Not he who finds a woman and marries her finds a good thing. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And as Bella said in her video, there's certain implications in the scripture that we can actually make. It doesn't say he who gets married finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. He who finds a wife. He who finds a woman who understands what it means to be a wife. And the thing is, some of you women out there aren't concerned about being wives, but then you're quick to call yourself the prize. Biblically speaking, if you don't have the qualities of a wife, you're not the prize. You're not. This is a, one of those hot pills to swallow. And if you need, you know, some a spoonful of sugar because it helps the medicine go down, I don't mind giving you a spoonful of sugar to make it easier for you to digest. But nonetheless, it's the truth. You being a woman doesn't make you the prize. You having a biblical foundation an understanding of who God is and what God expects from you as a woman and willing to apply that to your life makes you the prize. But a lot of women today, modern women don't want to hear that because then that's more of a traditional stance and doesn't make you feel like a boss. And the problem today is as Auntie Anyala, Anyala Van Zant says, <laughs> right? Women want to be men. Women are competing with men. And here's the thing, right? Let's be, let's call it, let's call it what it is. In, in many spaces, in many uh, economies around the United States, there are women who make substantially more than the men in their vicinity. And 
to prove that women compete with men, they are not willing to date a man unless they make at least what they make or more. Now, I don't have a problem with hypergamy. I understand the, the premise behind it because at the core, a woman generally wants to feel secured and provided for. So I get it. But the reason why this new modern age of feminism exists is to usurp the man from society as a whole. It's to really show how expendable men are. Shout out to Bella Rings in the chat for the $5 super chat. And I just shouted you out and shared, showed your video. So I'm not sure if you, you saw it, sis. But um, shout out to, to Bella Rings who gave me the $5 super chat. All right, who was spitting facts. So if you're not follow, following her channel, please follow her channel and subscribe right now. But again, the, the qualifications of a wife is extremely important for men to understand. And here's the thing, ladies. Some of you ladies get mad at how men date. Marriage-minded men generally date very differently from men who are just looking to smash. Men who are looking to smash don't mind putting up the money because they feel like they're investing in what's going to happen later on at night. But a marriage-minded man is looking to identify what qualities and traits you have that would make a good wife, not a good bedmate. I heard it like this the other day. I don't do soulmates. I'm going to be honest with you. But I heard it like this, right? Women need to identify what man wants to make them their soulmate or their bedmate. Which is, I, I like the premise of it, even though I don't ascribe to soulmates necessarily. But yeah. What's going on, Molly December? Yo, I was just having this very conversation with women calling themselves a prize with my male best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Now, women can call themselves the prize as long as they have a biblical understanding of what a wife is. Because again, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say a woman is the prize. All it says is, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. It also says this in Proverbs 31, which a lot of women like it, to quote, who can find a good woman? For her worth is, for, is, for her worth is more than rubies and jewels, right? Paraphrasing there, right? But that question is, is, is sort of like, Rhetorical, but not. Who can find that, is saying, right? Who can find it? In, in essence, mom was telling her son, this is a rare jewel. This is rare. As essentially saying, not all women you find will be the prize. So he who finds a wife finds a good thing. A worthy woman, a, a good woman, a, a good wife, who can find for her worth is far more than jewels, right? And so and essentially it's saying, who can find this? Because it, it, it exists, but it's rare. So, shout out to Smoke and Talk. What's going on? B-More's in the building. All right? Yes, yeah, mic drop. <laughs> All right? So, they exist. But here's the thing. Men who are marriage-minded, men who have a good foundation in a relationship with God, will date very differently than men who are just looking to smash. Don't you think for a second, and I'm, I'm speaking generally, because brothers, some of you brothers out there got it to spend, and you're willing to, to, to take you know, young ladies out and splurge and not expect anything. It's rare, <laughs> just as rare as the, the good woman that speaks of in, in Proverbs 31, but I, I'm not saying all of you guys are like this, but many of you guys are. So men who are marriage-minded date very differently. They're looking to collect data identify your traits, um, not necessarily test you, but to spend enough natural time with you without the mask just to see who you really are. Because you can put on your foundation. You can put on your lipstick, put on your lashes, your nails, your extensions. You can do, do the, 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 the mascara, the, 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 the con contouring, right? They even got pants with pads in them now. You could do that too, right? And then go out and all that and, and look the best you can, right? But that doesn't make you a good wife. 
And marriage-minded men trying to find a wife. So there's some things that they would do to qualify you that's very different than men who are just looking to smash. And one of those things is not necessarily taking you out on a date that's going to impress you. Marriage-minded men are not trying to impress any woman at all. They don't have time to impress you, okay? They don't. They're trying to, this is who I am, take it or leave it, can move on and find somebody else who may appreciate who, what I am. You know, they're looking just for a natural experience with a person to get to know them organically without all the, 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 the fluff and the fakeness. So many of you women won't like this. Because you were fooled to believe that you deserve a specific type of treatment. You were fooled to believe that the more money a man spends on you on a date is evidence of them being a good provider. Listen, men will go on, like, will, will, will rack up debt, money they don't have, borrow cars from their friends or their mamas or granddaddies to take you out on a date, to impress you, in hopes to smash at the end of the evening. Don't be fooled by that, by that, ladies. Okay? Men, also, don't be fooled by all the, the, the makeup. Okay? Marriage-minded men, ladies, are not looking necessarily at what you look like. They're trying to find out who you are. Now, attraction is important. They will most certainly look at you and determine if physically they can be attracted to you. Marriage-minded men don't marry women based on that, though. They don't. Attractive women, especially today, is a dime a dozen because with the, the cosmetic surgeries that exist today, a woman could be as pretty as she wants to be. As pretty as she wants to be. What's going on, Jamie? Glad you're here. Glad you're here. All right. As pretty as she wants to be. But her character, her character is what a good marriage-minded man wants. The issue is you have to get out of your own head and sort of unwrap years of unlearning. Years You got to un unlearn years of learning to really get to what is a good man really looking for. Now, a lot of the women who watch this channel are good women. Who, And if they're single, they want a good marriage-minded man. So that's why I'm sharing this content with you. Because if you want a marriage-minded man, they're out there. But you got to set yourself up and do years of unlearning so that you can be in a position to be married by this marriage-minded man. Okay? So they'll, they, so they'll, they'll set up first-time experiences with you that's not meant to impress you. They build up to that. But that's not what they're looking for. Okay? They, they, they don't want, they're not trying to create uh, an arena where you feel butterflies. He will be chivalrous. He may open up the door. He is probably going to pay for whatever meal you have or whatever coffee shop you go to, right? <laughs> but he will. He will. Because a marriage minded man understands that a woman is looking for security. So she's, he's going to try to keep her as safe and secure in that first date, second date, or whatever. It's going to happen. But you got to get out of your head thinking that you deserve five-star treatment. Here's the thing. In the first date, you deserve nothing. <laughs> you, here's, here's what you deserve. Here's what you deserve. Good conversation. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Good conversation where you can learn who he is and what he's about. Good conversation. If you guys can are compatible in, in, the, in the mental space and have conversation that does not lead to, dare I say it, sex? Uh, I, I pressed the wrong, I pressed the wrong button. It was supposed to be this button, but I pressed the wrong button. But you know what I, you know what I mean. Right? Right? Now, let me know if you disagree in the comment section or in the chat. Okay? Come on. There are levels to dating. Yes, there are. Amen. Looks aren't where it's at versus a person's pattern. Always pay attention to 
the patterns. Yes, extremely important. Extremely important. Because we are very much concerned today about aesthetics. The Bible says beauty is fleeting. If you find a man who's only concerned about your beauty, as you age, he's no longer going to probably want you. And he's going to look for somebody younger. But if you find a man who is trying to court you and learn your character, ooh, ladies, 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 you may be on to something there. You may be on to something there. Because he's going he's gonna to date you like that. He is going to look for, for shared experiences with you that brings out certain elements of your character. All right? He may do something like walk past a homeless person and see your reaction as he pays for somebody's dinner. Right? He may tell you Hey, I'm going to meet up with. I'm going to pick you up at this time. Get ready, and then uh, when you get, when you guys get ready, right, may take you to a soup kitchen to volunteer, and then take you out to eat at night. That after that, right, just, just to see where you are and where your head is, right. Marriage-minded men are really trying to identify: Can we do life together? And not really much. Is this a woman I can do life for? Women today are told that a man's role and job is to do that, take care of them solely. But let's look at the scripture, right? The biblical role of a woman is to be a man's helpmate. In what aspect? To help maintain the home. Not to maintain the home by herself, but to help maintain the home. To help rear up children. And in most cases... If he's a provider, she may be doing a lot of that as he's breaking his back to provide for his wife and kids. And that's why a marriage-minded man takes dating very seriously and goes very slowly, not at your pace. And this is one of the things, ladies, that you're going to have to understand. A marriage-minded man doesn't move at the pace of the woman he's trying to get to know. That's something that you need to, to, to really sit down and settle within your mind and understand. If he's marriage-minded, He's really trying to identify what it is and take the time to identify what it is that makes a good wife or makes you a good wife. You know, somebody's coming downstairs. Who came downstairs? Oh, one of my, I think it was Gabriel, because he comes down and asks me questions while I'm in, on my live stream. That's because that's, that's what kids do, right? Like you ever, you know what it's like? You know, watch this, right? You ever been sitting in your house with your kids around? And they don't bother you at all for nothing. And the second you get in your phone, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, I need this. It's like that. It's like that. I only go live stream. I only go live one hour a week, hour and a half a week. Nah, but I'm going to have to see what he wants. Whoa, 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 Dre. <laughs> <laughs> he, he could be a role model, especially if that's your outcome. Today, I'm talking straight to the marriage-minded men and marriage-minded women, okay? Yeah, Zion Williamson is in a situation where he's going to be paying out a lot of money to women he really haven't thought through. And that's a good example. Look at the contrast. Zion Williamson, at this specific phase in his life, is not marriage-minded. So he will splurge. And he's got the money to do it. He'll splurge, all right? Just in hopes that he can do what? At the end of the night. So if that's your, 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 your role model, uh, just be prepared to, to live the same fate he's living in with um, women he's having children with who he doesn't intend to marry. And hopefully he'll take care of those kids. Amen. Quality, looking for better or worse, sickness or health, richer or, poor, or poorer um, characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we should be looking for when we are dating. Men need to be qualified. So women can't be look, just dating men just to be dating. But at the same token, and this is one of those things that really offend a lot of women. Women, you need to be qualified too. 
You need to be qualified too. Yep. This is why, <laughs> I'm going to say it, the, the conversation, we should not even be having this conversation, but it's, it's had about what a woman would bring to the, the table. Or I'll say it differently. What a woman would contribute to a family once they get married. How, how, what if I say it like that? That's, that's, that's me putting a spoonful of sugar in the medicine to help it go down a little bit. What is a woman willing to provide or contribute to a home that she's married in? What is she willing to do? And that's one of those things where women who have been entitled and, and conditioned to believe that they don't have to do anything in society to get respect, right? They don't like questions like that because, again, they're told that they are the prize. But biblically, you need to qualify yourself to be a prize. So it's not necessarily, you know, you believing that a man who marries you is going to be lucky. I, I, that, that young lady who, um, who went viral for grabbing the microphone at her graduation, right? In her response to that viral video, she talked about her being a black woman and not needing to, to, to give an expl explanation or something to that effect. Entitlement, like she's conditioned to believe that she can do whatever she wants because of who she is or her genetic makeup. That's an issue. And there's a lot of women that walk around believing that they deserve certain things without having earned it at all, at all. Marriage minded men are not looking to waste their time. So they will take their time to get to know who a person is in order to marry them or to qualify them to be a wife. Every good relationship have qualifying factors. Every single good relationship has qual. Whether you know you you meet friends and you grow up and and because here's the thing, how how many of us had friends in our childhood, and as we matured and grew up, we lost those friendships but got closer with other people. The friends we grew up with, right? We realized as we got older, didn't really meet the qualifications of what it means to be a good friend. But my boy Tom, who works in the cubicle a few, you know, clicks down from me, mad cool. Like we 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 get it. Like we're bros, right? We only knew each other for like two and a half years, but we're bros, right? Because he qualified. Every good relationship has qualifying factors to it. Trust, you know. And this is, here's the thing about me, right? Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys, and I'm going to you know be a little bit transparent. I love everybody. I'm a loving person. I'm friendly with everybody. I don't trust everybody. And what I would tend to do is I would share information with one person that I really don't mind people knowing to see if it'll get back to me. Claim If they claim to be a friend, I will tell them things. And uh, if it gets back to me, I know it was them because I ain't tell nobody else that. At that point, they didn't meet the qualifications if they told somebody else. All right? We have jobs. And employers want to see your resume to see if you are qualified. Qualifi being qualified for any, any specific thing isn't a bad thing. In fact, that's something that we, should need, we need to be working on. Bella spoke in that short video about having being qualified and one of those things that you need to qualify ladies how to qualify yourself is to start developing those skills that you need to become a good wife and mom developing those skills because a man will date you to see if you have a, a marriage minded man will date you to see if you have those skills and will qualify you for that are you qualified to be a good wife Yes, truth. I told a friend of mine that very thing the other day. She is pressuring her beau to marry her. I looked over at her and said, that's the quickest way to lose his interest. It sure is. It sure is. And if he's marriage minded, it's going to lose his interest because that means that there's some things that he hasn't seen in you yet that he needs to see. It's not a bad thing. And I get it. Uh, Biologically, I know women have a little bit less time than men do. 
So I know if you're a little bit older, if you're in your late thirties, you know, your forties or fifties or whatever, you, you probably want to get married quicker. So you want the guys to, you know, but again, a marriage minded man, okay. may have had some experience in the past. And he doesn't want to make the same mistakes again. So that means that you need to make sure that you are ready to be a wife at the time you're ready to start dating so that he can see those qualities a lot faster. A lot faster. A marriage-minded man may also do this, right? If he has no kids, he may bring you to a family function and see how you interact with his nieces and nephews and little cousins. A marriage-minded man, right, may invite you over to his mom and dad's house, right, and uh, be like, and this, this is real foul, but he may do this, uh, Hey, I got to run an error real quick. I'll be right back. I'm going to run to the store and leave you with them, right? And leave you with them, right? Just to see how you would interact with. Now, mind you, if he does this like on the first, second, third date, run. I'm talking about like after a while, like you've been dating for like a few months or a year. I'm talking about you've, you've already met them and developed some sort of a relationship with his parents. I'm not saying like, you know, on date two. He's picking you up, taking you to his parents' house, and leaves you for like an hour. No, no. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about like for 15 minutes to go get like a gallon of milk or something, right? He may do that to see your interactions and, and then identify with his parents what kind of woman you are. A marriage-minded man, man, is looking to do things like that. Because in today's day, people are getting married without the guidance and the support from their parents and their immediate family. And I think that that's a problem. Immediate families can be a good buffer or a good warning system to prevent you from making a poor decision that may hurt you psychologically, emotionally, financially, spiritually in the long run. If he is a marriage-minded man, he's looking for those things because he wants to be a husband to a good wife and he wants to raise kids with a good wife. So you got to be chill, ladies. Relax, because it'll come. Excuse me, it'll come. It's the coffee. But it'll come when it's supposed to in the relationship. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, yeah, it's coming, girl. You know, I'm not doing all that, right? If you do the work to improve yourself, to be a good wife and a good woman, he's going to do certain things to qualify you. And if you've already done those things, that means you're already qualified, already qualified. If you get angry because you feel like he is testing you, you may not be marriage material and he's going to just move on. He's going to move on. And truth be told, he should. He should move on because, again, he's not wasting his time. He's not wasting his time. So despite what your girls may tell you, despite what these Instagram and YouTube and, and relationship experts, I, I watched this video today of this older lady, um, she's probably a little older than me, uh, talking to women about how horrible marriage is, right? And how it's the biggest scam ever. I was, and, and hearing her talk, I'm like, she's not even coming from an educated position. This is all feelings, all feelings. Listen to this, ladies, listen to this. For you to be a good wife, you have to do the work prior. Some recommendations. Get with older married women and speak to them and learn from them and glean from them. Go to the church and, 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 and get, connect with godly women who have solid marriages. Solid marriages. Even some marriages that have gone through some things that they've overcome. All those things are good to learn. To get you qualified to be a good wife. Because a man, a marriage-minded man is looking for those things. Because truth be told, and if you've been married before, you know this. Times are going to get hard. Times are going to get hard. He needs to know that when times get hard, if he stands up to lift up the family, you're not trying to weigh him down even more than, he, than necessary. Listen. Listen. 
right? Because my best friend in my 20s is not my best friend today. Her character was not of my liking, especially with the number of men she was always bringing around her kids. My dad raised me better. Come on. And I don't care how old I am. I'm not rushing my man, a man to marry me. Nope. Yep. Hey, my American brother. What's going on, Dave Atkins? Thoughts on speed dating in general and if you would recommend it. I, I, I don't mind speed dating, to be perfectly honest with you. Like in a speed dating event, that again, I think that's fine as long as you understand that you're looking to collect information and data. You know, you're not going to probably find your wife right away at a speed dating event unless God does something miraculously. But if you're looking to collect data and identify if a woman is going to be a good woman, I wouldn't mind it at all. I wouldn't mind it at all. But what, what, what country are you from, Dave Atkins? Dave Atkins sounds like British. I could be wrong. Well, let me know. What country are you from? Okay. But yeah, so I, I would I wouldn't I would not not recommend speed dating. Uh, but I think that it has to be done with the, the right mindset. Okay. You're looking at to meet somebody to get to know. When I need advice or role models, I lean on my aunts and uncles. They have that have been married for over 50 years. Come on. Come on. Those are amazing. <laughs> yep, British. <laughs> you have Professor X powers. Yeah, yeah. I can connect with my my, my audience through the camera and online and <laughs> through the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But shout out to you from across the pond. Glad you are watching with us. All right. Yeah, but speed dating is not a bad thing. Again, as long as your perspective and you're going into it with the right mindset. If you're not looking to go in and smash, you're just trying to find somebody that you can get to know, by all means. But then... uh. And I always say this, there should always be some room left for there to be uh, a breaking of the, the communication. Okay. Always. So without there being any kind of like, you know, ill feelings or hurt there. All right. So but yeah, I, I would recommend it. All right. Other things that men will probably do. Okay. To qualify you to be a wife. He may take you shopping. OK, and this is after you have learned him a little bit, after you know what kind of job he has. Right. After, you know, his general income status, he may take you shopping. Right. He may have a bag on him to spend. OK. For your birthday or whatever. Right? He may. Right. And he's going to see what you look to buy. What kind of clothes you wear. What kind of pictures you post on your Instagram and what you wear? You may do all that. What stores you shop at? Because he's, again, marriage-minded men has, has, has a good mindset where they, they understand that in today's day, uh, a husband's responsibility is not just to make his wife happy. In fact, that's not really his responsibility at all. But he's going to try to the best of his ability. He's meant to provide. So he's going to try to identify does she understand the 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 dynamic the, the, the financial balance within a home? Okay, like, is she going to expect the? I don't even know what stylish today, and that's that's horrible. The Louis V's and the red red bottoms, or the Gucci, or um, a Birkin bag. I heard about that the other day. A Birkin bag. Is she is she going to want all those things? And then this is another way he's going to qualify you. He's going to identify if you want those things and then see where you're living. Because if you're living and you're not making any money, and you kind of, he's going to be like, what, how, what, what, what is this? Okay. These are things that he's going to do. Not because he's trying to like belittle you. Really trying to identify, is this person going to be a good steward of the finances he provides to you? It may not be at that scale, but they will do something of the sort to identify how you would manage a spending situation under knowing and understanding the current financial status that exists. Marriage minded man will do those things. And these are things that he's going to do in order to qualify you as his wife, because he understands this. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And he's not going to obtain favor from the Lord. If he just marries anyone, He's going to obtain favor from the Lord if he marries a woman who has already had the qualifications of being a wife. 
Dave Atkins said, just wanted to say, really love your message in the Kevin Samuels vid uh, you did about character. Additionally, I feel personality and intent are so important traits, are also important traits with uh, the latter being the genuine. 100%. Kevin Samuels brought out an amazing talking piece and conversation piece that we all had an opportunity, a lot of us had an opportunity to talk about. And and a couple of things I disagree with him on. So many things, a lot of things he, he talked about, I was like, yo, he's on point with that. But my position is all those things are fine, but priority, like what, what should lead all those things is a man's character. You can't be high value with low character. And that's that's that that was my position there. But yeah, but he brought brought out a lot of good points there. A lot of good points. And honest to be to being a proper man, too many guys thirsting and in it for a quick bang. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's the point I'm making. A, a marriage-minded man isn't trying to make a, a good first impression. He's just trying to present himself and hopefully would put you in an environment for you to present your true self. He'll be chivalrous. He'll open up the door. he pay for your meal. It just might be at a, a nice, quaint, cozy coffee shop. Ideal for conversation. It might be on a pier walking and getting some ice cream okay it might be bowling <laughs> you know because good conversations happen on bowling and bowling is a fun fun first date top golf which i'm looking to go with my wife soon right well all those things are great great conversation pieces but that's the point like you know he's about his business if he takes you somewhere on the first date that's ideal for conversation. You know it. You know it. And the thing is, that's on the rise. A lot of men are doing that because they're tired of the games. It seems like the roles are reversed, right? 20 years ago, the women were tired of the games because the men were playing. Let's, let's call it a buck. Like, like, let's, let's keep it real. Men were playing games back in the, like the 20 years ago, like games, right? And women were trying to be good women and wives and trying to do their thing. Today, the roads have switched a little bit. Men are like, I'm tired of this, man. I just want a good woman. And the women, for the most part, like the, you know, generally, I'm not saying all of it, they're out there like ready to play. Nah. They want the hot girl summer. And they want the girls' trips and... Uh, the, the brothers are like, I just want to find a good woman to, to marry. But they're out there with their girls in Jamaica on the rivers, getting them mud massages and all that craziness out there <laughs> on the girls' trips. But, um, yeah, that's how marriage-minded men go into relationships. That's how they qualify women to be wives. Especially if they are a believer, if they're a Christian man, and they're about their, their their relationship and 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 God and their relationship with God and and really want to find a good wife, they're going to do things to try to qualify you to see if you're going to be a good wife, and that's not a bad thing, despite what every other um, female empowerment speaker or communicator has told you, because just like he qualifies you to be a wife, you are already conditioned to qualify men to be a good husband. But not really even a good husband because a lot of women, not, not all, but a lot of women will only use financial metrics to identify if a man's going to be a good husband. And that's a bad metric to use. A horrible metric to use. Molly says, wait, which one did she say first? What if in our younger years, we've actually pur uh, purchased those nice bags and shoes our, for ourselves and still have them after meeting the guy? So we have no interest in buying. <laughs> Listen, that's smart, right? I mean, if you if, if you were into that before, right, and you got those expensive bags, then they should be lasting well over the time span that you are in, that you've met your significant other. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I always want to know if I always want to know if you were 
this suave and confident from a young age as you came up across the naturally. Every time I tune into one of your amazing videos or streams, we need more class acts like you. I appreciate that, brother Dave. Honestly, um, uh, I, I am who I am. It's, I, 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 thank you for saying I'm, I'm suave. Uh, my students don't think so. My students think I am the corniest man on the planet. And I am confident. And what makes me confident is that I really don't care what people think about me. And it's not like one of those, yeah, I do whatever I want. I just don't spend a lot of time concerned about people's thoughts about me. Everybody's going to have a, a thinking, some, some thought about me and about you. Uh, if they haven't invested anything significantly, significant into your life, uh, in my perspective, I don't have time to invest emotions in people that haven't invested in, into my life. So uh, I guess my confidence comes from me not caring what people think about me. And I want to do exactly what I feel is right at any given moment of the day. So, uh, yeah, so that's what makes me confident. But suave, uh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, the only thing suave about me is the shampoo and conditioner I use in my hair. I got to be honest with you. No, nah, I think I think I could. I, I have <laughs> uh, on occasion, I'm told that I have like this uh, grown man swag. So. Um, but yeah, uh, but it, it wasn't always that way. Uh, there was a moment, I'll be honest with you, in uh, well, like 15 years ago when uh, my life took a, a really bad turn, and I was always confident, but uh, the suave thing, I, I, I lost not confidence, but uh, yeah, there, there was just it was a, a certain point in my life where I had to like rebuild that, but yeah, but I appreciate you saying that, bro. And I will never have an interest in a $250,000. Hermes Birkin bag. That's how much that bag costs. You can buy a house and live in it for the amount of a bag. That's literally getting the bag. Yeah, I've had that issue for a long time regarding caring what others think until a recent couple years ago. Yeah. Sorry if I keep derailing the main topic. No, nah, it's cool, bro. I, I like having conversations. So the topic is there for a talking point, but I'll, I'll, I'll derail the topic if we have something else to talk about. That's good. But yeah, I hear you. When men get older, they just stop caring. They just stop caring. It's just, I, I, I'm 43 years old and uh, I have no time in my life to try to impress anybody. Um, and uh, and again, most men who are marriage minded, now here's me going back, they're not concerned about trying to impress anybody either. They are who they are. And ladies, you know you have a confident man when he can, you know, walk around with his toes out in the middle of summer. <laughs> like I'm saying that because I tend to do that. Once, once the summer starts, my toes are out all summer. Right. And I walk, I walk through the hood, through the hood in my Jesus sandals. <laughs> and I don't care. I worked at, I worked at a, a community center, right. Years ago. And kids used to roast me because my toes are out. Right. My toes are out. And I didn't care, you know. In fact, I would uh, sometimes I would give five dollars to the person who had the best roast. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, all right, that was good. I I'll hit him up with five dollars and buy him some pizza. But um, yeah, confidence is a, is a huge thing, and uh, that's another thing a man is looking for: a confident woman who isn't overly concerned with what other other people think about them. Because here's what happens: right, it becomes a competition. Women don't think they're competitive, but women. When it comes to life, like life, tend to be a little bit more competitive with other women than men are. Men will collaborate and do life together when it comes to making money and things like that, right? But when it comes to sports, nah, you ain't better than me. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go get the ball, let's go hoop, let's hoop, all right? Game to 11, I'll spot you three, right? All right, that's why we're competitive in sports like that, but women tend to be a little bit more competitive in life, right? And so, so they'll compete with with things. Like, I just lost my point, point of thought. Um, but they'll compete with one another. That's why, like, women would um, uh, see uh, their friend who got something done in their backyard, mm -hmm. and then they wind up going to try to get something better in their backyard because they they, they compete, right? Um, men necessarily aren't really like that. But uh, yeah, let me get back. Amen. To oh, back yeah, I was saying that about confidence. So. Uh, oh, uh, thank you for bringing me back on track, Molly December. So women, right, 
are conditioned today, a lot of women at all, to uh, to believe that they deserve the best experiences all time, every time. Experiences that they can brag to their girls about because it's about a competition. Girl, let me tell you what he did for me. He did this and he did that, da, 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 which is a mistake, ladies. Stop telling your girlfriends what your men or your husbands are doing for you because it makes them jealous and it makes them sometimes attractive to your man or husband. Knock it off. What he did for you is for you. Knock it off. So, so like, so let's say if you take a, a young lady, gentleman, out on a first date, and she expects, you know, uh, a four hundred dollar meal on a first date, it's probably because she's looking to say to 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 have a story to brag about to her girlfriends. Okay, but a young lady who was content in having a nice, small, quaint, cozy uh, arena for you guys to have a first date to, to con converse, right? And she's content in that. She's probably not concerned with what her girls think about her or anybody else for that matter. But a young lady who believes that she deserves more than that might be overly concerned with what other people say about her. About her. So, uh, amen to that confidence. Second Corinthians speaks on not comparing ourselves to others, not worrying about what others think of you and what they have versus what you have. Preach. Preach, right? So, yeah. So, again, I'm going to get ready to close this out. But when it comes to this qualifying thing, ladies, um, this is not going to like this is not going to be one of those highly viewed videos because a lot of these truths aren't popular for either side. It's not. Women aren't going to watch this and be like, "Wow, he's right," and they won't say that because. I'm not, you know, tickling their ears and telling them how awesome and great they are, even though they are. I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying that you are going to be in a position to be qualified just like you qualify men. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, additionally, men, know what you're looking for in order to qualify them. Because if you're looking for a wife, you may be attracted to her initially. However, it's her character that you're looking for. It's her character that you're looking to identify. I was just about to say that. Stop telling your business to your friends. I don't even share my biological with my biological sisters or what a man does for me or what we've done with each other. Listen. Listen. It keeps them from fantasizing about your husbands. It does. Okay. So, with that being said, ladies, don't be upset if a man is trying to qualify you to be his wife. In fact, be flattered. Be confident in this, that you are in a position to get to know a man who really wants to be a husband. Now, if he feels you don't qualify to be a wife, you can do one of two things. You probably get upset, you know, who he think he is, I am the prize, go on with that whole that whole rhetoric, or you can say, okay, what am I, what, what are some things I need to work on? Because truth be told, right? Good men who have been broken up by good, like by women tends to self-reflect and say, okay, what, 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 what was the reason why this lady didn't want to be with me? Okay. Now they can then assess, okay, I need to work on that. Or no, I'm not going to do that because she's expecting too much. Either or, you guys have to do the same thing. The same thing. Because a good man, a good Christian man is looking to qualify a woman to be his wife because he understands what Proverbs 18, 22 really means because he's trying to find favor with the Lord. And if he finds a good woman or a good wife, let me rephrase, if he finds a good wife and then marries her, then he has obtained favor from the Lord. So, us men out here trying to just find favor with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So, if you ain't a good wife, I ain't marrying you. Therefore, I won't have, I won't be favorless <laughs> because I married you. So, I'm going to back off. All right? And you got to respect that, ladies. 
So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this live stream. I greatly appreciate it or for watching the replay. If you made it this far to the video in the video and have not liked the video, please do me a favor and like the video. It lets you to know that this is a video worth sharing and hopefully other people will get to watch this video and uh, respond to it. And if you haven't done so yet, do me a favor and go to uh, at Bella Rings. I think it's at Bella Rings. Let me make sure. Uh, at Bella Rings, B-E-L-L-A-R-I-N-G-S. I subscribe to her channel. That's a video I played earlier. She has a lot of, and especially if you're a, a woman, because I know some of you ladies don't like to, to hear things like this from a man. And I understand. I really believe that women should be encouraging women. You can go to her channel and get some encouragement there as well. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification next to it. It'll let you know when I upload a new video and when I go live like I'm doing right now. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have a couple of ways to do so. By supporting the channel, you'll be part of the Harrison Immediate family. <laughs> you can uh, hit the membership button down below and go to page or go to patreon.com forward slash Harrison, ooh, Harrison Family Values. And there we have inexpensive tiers that you can support the cha channel every single month. And it allows us to keep this content going. Or you can purchase merch. If you look down below, there's some t-shirts, hoodies, and, and what so have you. And you can purchase uh, merch there. By purchasing merch, you get something in return. You can also get my book. So if you go to Amazon.com, you can search from a fatherless father to his sons. It's also a book uh, where my father wrote. He passed away two weeks ago. He wrote the the um, end credits of the book. So um, you can buy that book as well. And uh, uh, and by buying the book, you'll be supporting the channel and getting something in return. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, I thank you guys so much for watching. And until the next upload or live stream, I'm out. Peace. As I try to exit the stream.